Stampers, this is Kathleen. Welcome to my YouTube channel and today's It's Masculine Monday Christmas card. Uh, today I wanted to make something that I thought was, well, that was kind of sparkly and because even though guys won't admit it, they like sparkly glittery things too. So I decided to do a card using some ma what most people traditionally call masking masculine colors. And then um, I wanted to make it really glitzy and sparkly and um, make it a Christmas card too. So one of the things that we're going to do with today's card is this portion of the card right here is what I call a quilting technique. It makes the card look like it's been quilted. Um, if you have more of it showing, um, like if you had made this a bigger panel on the card, it will actually look puffy and uh, quilted. And I think it just adds some nice little interest for your card. But for today I decided to trim it down a little bit and so you're just only seeing a small amount of it. But it's a really easy technique to do and I'm going to show you how. I also made this card using exactly the same techniques but you can see how just changing the colors um, really makes the card look very different. But this is a great Christmas card. Um, this one is too, but I think this one is just a little bit more masculine in color. So let's get started. Well, the first thing that we wanted to do is I'm going to be using the um, Stamping Up scoreboard and I'm going to be using the diagonal plate with this board. And what I did is I took a piece of Whisper White cardstock, four and a quarter by five and a half, and um, let's see if you can, here we go. So you can see that I'm doing some score lines on it. And what I'm going to do is you, you need to have um, a diagonal plate on your board in order to do this. And so I've added my additional diagonal plate and that's just an extra um, piece that you can, or accessory that you can buy for your Stampin' Up! cutting board. And then what I did is I, you just put it into the corner then you're going to take your scoring tool and I use the larger end of the tool and let's see if I can come in a little tighter um, and move this back so you can see. So what I'm doing is I would start in the center of the scoreboard and then I'm going to move across to every inch across the top and then I will also go to every inch down the side. And so it's just a case of finding the inch. Your score tool is just going to fit right in the little slot and then scoring down um, at all of the even numbers. I mean at every at every inch is where you're going to do this. Okay, so that's what your scoring would be. And then you would turn the card and you would continue across the top and down the side until what you would have is the entire surface would have this little quilted area on it. Okay, so then we'll set this aside. So then what I did is this is the card that now I trimmed down and I decided that what I wanted were three diamonds uh, wide and I wanted four diamonds down. So um, it's just what I did is I just picked the size of my image and then just kind of spread it out from there. And I just thought it was a pleasing look and so that's the size of, that I made it. Um, and now what you want to do is you want to get this inking across your card. So you're going to fold it on every one of the little lines that your scoring created, just like this. And then you're going to take your stamp pad. And I played around with several stamp pads and found that the stays on worked the best because it dried much more quickly. And when I was folding and going on to the next color or to the next stripe, it wasn't. Um, I wasn't having any problem with any smearing of the color. So what you will do is you'll just come out a little. You're just going to take your pad and you'll open it up and then you're just going to take your folded card. You'll just fold it on each one of these. In fact, let me work on this one that hasn't been um, that hasn't been colored. So you will just fold like I said on every on every crease that you've made, every score line. And then all I did 
was run it across the pad. And then I just look at it to make sure that I've got even coverage. And that's all there is to it to make your color. So then what you would do is you would just move on to the next area and fold it back and then hold it against the pad and do that same thing again. And so what I did is I went ahead and I colored all my lines and then I trimmed it down to the size that I actually wanted my card to be. Now another way that you can do this is instead of dragging it across the card is you can use a sponge dauber one of these little guys, okay, and you would just ink it up in the pad and then you can run this along. Um, this seems to be what, well, everywhere that I was finding a video on showing me how to do this technique, that's how they got theirs, was using the sponge dauber. But I did not like how thick the line became with the sponge dauber. I like the thinner line that I was able to achieve using just the pad. Um, so again, it's just your personal preference, but I really thought this was much cleaner and a better image. And so that's how why I chose to just run it across the pad. So again, all you're gonna do is fold your card in all directions and then um, you'll go ahead so you'll fold it this way and mark them all, then you'll fold them this way and you'll ink them all just like you did the first. So that's how that card is achieved. Then what I'm going to do is um, I'm using the Wonderland stamp set from Stampin' Up! And I'm using the tree image. And so what we're going to do, and I decided that I was going to stamp the tree image in um, Memento. Um, I do a lot of my stamping in Memento because I, I like how it comes off of my pad. My pad or my stamp cleans up a little bit better and I just don't have a lot of um, uh, residue and black stains on the... It's just my idiosyncrasy. Uh, but you could easily stamp this in stays on just as easily as I am doing with the um, memento ink. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to ink this up really well. Make sure that everybody has covered and so that we're going to get a really nice stamping. Okay, and then we'll take our card. Now, okay, so all I'm going to do is set it down here nice and straight. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is use this center line that's right here on my grid paper and that's going to just help me line everything up so that I know that my trees are going to be straight and centered. And you can see I have lines on the top of my stamp here and here to help me um, make sure that I get things nice and centered also. So we'll go ahead and Stamp this down. And just like normal, I like to hang on or leave my stamp down for a moment so that the ink has the ability to absorb into your paper. And I think I get a much better stamping when I do that. So we're just going to lift it up and too high guess I need to do this again. All right, thank goodness. Isn't it nice that there's always two sides to every piece of paper? So that you get to see that I make mistakes too. I all do. So we're going to ink it up again. Okay, try this again. <laughs> all right, so we'll line it up. It's nice and even. Okay, and then we'll 
come down from the top a little bit like I should have done the first time. And we'll try again. I really thank you for viewing today's tutorial. You know, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and you can purchase any of the Stampin' Up! supplies that I've used today. Um, just go out to click on the Visit My Blog link, which will be right up here, or <laughs> right here at the top of the, of the video. And you can click on the photo thumbnails or on my shopping cart that you'll find out on my blog. Okay, so there's our tree. Now we'll go ahead and we'll mount this together. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my uh, sparkly cardstock or my silver glimmer paper to my basic black. And you will find as you do that, that this card just goes together so easily. It just does not take any time at all to come up with a really nice card for that special fella. So let's go ahead and get this centered. Okay. There we go. Now, in order to get the Whisper White to stick to this card star or to the shimmer paper, it's got a lot of bumps to it because of the glitter. So you can cut out the middle like I've done before and use dimensionals to adhere it, but I wanted it flat. So what I'm going to be doing is I am going to use the Tombow multi glue, but I'm going to be using a lot. And so what happens is by having a larger amount than what you would usually do, um, actually having kind of little lumps of the glue to where you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've got way too much glue on this. But by doing that, <coughs> the glue can actually go into all those little crevices that are created by the um, glitter and it will give it something to adhere to and you'll get a better impression. So this can just go down right like that. Okay. Now on my basic cardstock, it's a um, eight and a half by eleven. I cut it in half at four and a quarter, so it's eleven by four and a quarter, and I scored it five and a half. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to glue the glimmer paper to the black with my snail adhesive. We'll get this mounted on here. If it would just cooperate. Okay. And then we're going to take our piece that we uh, did our quilting technique on and we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to put a larger quantity of the Tombow glue than I would normally use because it needs to be able to stick in all of those bumps that are created by the glitter. So we'll go ahead and pick this up. Get this on the page or on the card. And you can see it's not centered um, up and down because I'm going to put my sentiment down here. So I just want a little bit of space for the sentiment. So you can see that you have a little moment that you can move stuff around and then you just need to let it sit for a second. So then we have <coughs> our sentiment, which you will find in the same stamp set in the Wonderland stamp set. <coughs> Excuse me. And this will be applying this right here. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and we'll hook that down. The other thing that I am trying to remember to do more and more when I'm cutting out cardstock is to, especially on my glimmer paper, because um, it's a little more expensive than the standard cardstock is to cut out the center 
but I did not cut the center out of this piece. I could have and should have, but I did not because of the size that I needed. I was just hadn't quite decided how much space I needed yet when I designed the card. So, but you could easily re cut out that section that's underneath here <coughs> and use that for the piece that you're attaching here. And I think that that would look really great. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, my cough is not going to go away. So then we'll go ahead and we'll mount that on the card just like that with dimensionals. And then we'll add a bow. And I used black embroidery, embroidery floss for my bow. Add a little interest at the bottom. So here's our card. And here's the other card that I made using the same format but just with different colors. Thanks again for joining me for today's video tutorial. I I really appreciate you stopping by and watching this. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and bye for now.